So with that, we're going to now transition to talking about our fuel cell collaboration with Parker at Hyzon. So I think we got some slides to show that uh, have a little bit of a look and feel of what this truck is starting to come together and be. But uh, to yep. kick things off here, Parker, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks uh, for having me. You want to give a little overview on uh, on Hyzon and what you guys do? Glad to. Well, thanks again for having me here today, Tom. It's an exciting day. And at Hyzon, we're glad to be a, a small part of what you guys are doing here. So Hyzon's core is proprietary in-house design, development, and manufacturing of high-power fuel cell systems. And that fuel cell system development goes all the way back to the MEA, the Membrane Electrode Assembly, which if you, if you haven't heard the walkthrough that Mark from Hylion's giving on our fuel cell system, it's, it's great and goes through the basics of what a fuel cell is. Um, you know, that's being done today focused on, on high-power fuel cell systems. And that's where the core of what Hyzon is. Um, that IP goes back to 20 years of development. And we're focused on bringing that 200 kilowatt single stack fuel cell system to commercialization at our Chicago area plant. Um, we believe that trucks are ready to be commercialized now. And that's why we're focused on you know, putting the, the first fuel cell truck together with our, our friends here. So when we initially put out that roadmap of, you know, starting with the RX, then going to Carno. At that point, I think we were just saying fuel agnostic and then eventually to fuel cell. We didn't know who we were gonna work with on the fuel cell development. We knew fuel cells was not in our uh, portfolio. It wasn't something we were gonna do, uh, but we spent um, a long time doing a full market uh, deep dive research, figuring out who had different solutions, which ones really made the most sense. One of the things that really stood out with Hyzon is the fact that you guys actually can power a truck off of one stack. So you wanna share a little bit more about how that differentiates to the competitors in the space? Sure, and, and to start, I'll just I'll, I'll, um, orient folks to the basics of a fuel cell. So a fuel cell is made up for ours with hundreds of single cells that cell, starting with the, the membrane electrode uh, assembly is where the power happens. It's an electrochemical process where hydrogen combines with oxygen from air to create that, that, that power. So to create high power density, you need an MEA, which has been developed to produce high power density. We have IP that does that. The single cell has a basically a frame, a plate that holds the MEA called the, for us, it's a bipolar plate. So plates are often either graphite or metal. Ours is a hybrid, it's graphite and metal. Each side is different, right? So that in, 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 in all graphite or an all metal plate, each has their advantages and disadvantages. Our hybrid approach takes the best of both. And then finally, stacking that up in hundreds of, of cells, that stack design, the ability to do that at 250 kilowatts as a stack, that the, 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 the balance of plant around the, uh, the stack consumes 50 kilowatts, leading to a 200 kilowatt net system. You know, that design and the ability to use one stack with one set of BOP is a significant edge. And so what that leads to is, you know, most fuel cell trucks out there use two complete systems to get to around 200, 240 kilowatts of power. Class A trucks need that kind of power in a fuel cell application. With only one stack and one set of BOP, we're about 30% less weight, 30% less volume, so it fits in better. And versus two of our 110 kilowatt systems, it's about 25% lower cost to manufacture. And you know, just to, to comment on like kind of the market study we did, so I think the smallest we saw was other providers being saying, hey, you need to put two fuel cells in the truck in order to get the power level. We even see, saw some suppliers saying we need to put three fuel cell stacks in the right. vehicle in order to get the power level. Uh, but, you know, that's something when, you know, we we dove in with with, uh, with you guys on this, it was a, hey, we, this is one system that we can put in uh, and integrate it with the powertrain. Now, from our end, uh, as we look at this joint development together, this is really leveraging what we've already built from a powertrain solution, right? Because batteries, e-axles, the actual software integration, all that stays the same. Uh, and then you want to talk a little bit about kind of the joint development building of this first truck, where we're at with that? That's right. So first, I'll just say that um, similar to the research that Thompson and his team did on, on us, you know, when we look at put, putting our resources to bring our fuel cell technology, the fuel cell control software, and supporting the integration of, of that, you know, there's only so, so many partners we want to work with to, to do that. So what Hylion does in powertrain development, the componentry and, and what they have here that, 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 that you're seeing, you know, we just see a combination of they do really, really well on the vehicle side. But we do really, really well on the fuel cell side, bringing again the fuel cell system, the integration support on the, on the fuel cell side and the control software. All that software is developed in house and helps control the fuel cell to match up with the, uh, the vehicle unit. All right, so we talked to a lot of the same fleets, right? Yep. Uh, and you know, we're kind of on the same side of the table of saying, look, 
you know, range extender electric solutions, right? That's uh, what both of our companies are doing. What have been some of the things you've heard, because we shared it some from our vantage point, but around as fleets are trying out BEV trucks and why or why not a range extender is really needed? Yeah, so um, when you look at fleets, what I love to hear, there's a lot of um, theoretical science out there that says, well, in the future, it should all be bioelectric because of conversion ratios, which may or may not take into account the great work that, th that the team here has done on true losses in the, in the grid. The facts are, even if the conversion economics um, were, were different, fleets don't buy trucks based on theoretical science, right? Fleets buy trucks based on economics for their fleet. And uh, most fleet applications are not super high margin for the end user. So they protect that cost and the revenue that's going into that, that uh, truck. And when we talk to fleets, there's really, in our view, three types of fleets, right? There's fleets that are focused on, on load, maximizing that 80 to 82,000 pound load. Battery electric trucks have a huge challenge. Typically versus a fuel cell truck, all battery trucks are between three and 6,000 pounds heavier. That's real revenue. That's real margin loss that a lot of fleets just, just can't, can't, can't uh, do. Some fleets are either, um, they either time out, meaning their drivers make a lot of stops, so they, they can only drive so far before they have, have to, to a stop, or they pack out, meaning they're holding a bunch of big light stuff like shoes or, or, or a chips. For those two types, typically it's about charge time, right? So the, the, to, the need to have to, with today's technology, charge typically four plus hours minimum to, uh, on, a, on a 350 kilowatt charger. Um, and even in a future state of a 500 kilowatt to a megawatt charger, the significantly higher charge times versus a 15 to 20 minute um, fuel up is a big impact. And then separately range, right? So um, I think it was mentioned before, the, the, the fuel cell trucks today with 350 bar uh, tanks go about 300, maybe 350 miles, depending on the, the awaiting. Um, the future state, there's a, a, a liquid fuel truck that we're developing now that is going into demonstration soon um, that, could, that we're targeting a minimum 600 mile range. So, um, you know, there's real reasons why we think a vast majority of the fleet use cases out there, battery electric just will not work for before you get to infrastructure. So you had some staggering stats. <laughs> I'll add two more. Yep. Um, so when you look at studies done by utilities that know power and you look at a, a future truck stop dedicated just to BEV charging with this futuristic, you know, one megawatt charger, which will solve the charge time problem, right? One truck stop in the future with that technology would take the same power to power a 100,000 person town, right? Um, and, then, and then beyond that, um, and when, when you talk about real commercial application, one of our competitors, a very large manufacturer, um, told a story at a conference recently. They sold 300 all BEV trucks to a customer on the West Coast, right? Customer's excited, want to go get chargers together. They go to the local utility to say, let's get chargers permitted for those 300 trucks. They said, you can have permits for 19 trucks. They said, okay, when can I get the other 281 trucks of chargers? They said, six years. Right, so there's there's real limits to how battery trucks can be deployed and and, and uh, scaled. The other thing we actually spoke together on a panel uh, a couple of weeks ago in New York, and uh, one of the themes that we touched on a few times was practical adoption. And I think practical adoption even comes true when we're looking at hydrogen and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. So uh, hydrogen infrastructure is limited today, but how do you see that practical adoption taking place for a fuel cell truck? Yeah, and and that's that's exactly where you know. When you look at the commercial applications today, right? We've had fuel cell trucks in trial for about 15 months here in the US. We really understand the use case, what the fleets can do with them, and how the fueling infrastructure is going to scale up. We've invested um, our time and resources and partnerships in the hydrogen production space, and there's uh, partners that we have on the dispensing side as well, and we're acti actively engaging with fleets on real scale-up plans. Um, and, and what that looks like is a steady scale up with dispensing availability and with subsidy um, that will happen and, and will start now, but is going to take a few years to, to, to a scale up. So today there are mobile fuelers. You know, the first trucks that a, a fleet takes, no one's going to take 50 or 100 trucks in their, in their, their, their first year. They're going to trial a truck. They're going to order maybe a 50 to 100 truck intention, but take five to 10 trucks in, in, in the first year. And that matches with a 500 uh, kilogram to a, a, a ton mobile fueler. And then while they're experiencing those first five to uh, 10 trucks, the second order may be 15 to 25 trucks. You then permit install a small temporary behind the fence fueling setup because most of these fleets today fuel behind their own their own their own fence. The first fleets that adopt, you know, any whether it's a battery electric or hydrogen 
uh, system are going to likely be behind the fence because you can have one fueling solution to fuel the whole the whole the whole of the fleet. So it's a three to four year scale up vision, but we do believe that large fleets, fleets that buy 500 to 1,000 trucks a year that have real decarbonization goals to convert 10, 15, 20% of a 5,000 truck fleet by 2030, they got to start buying trucks now, start this process, and within three or four years could be buying 100 plus trucks a, a year with with fuel that, that, that scales with it. Anything else we didn't cover? No, I, I just think, you know, what, what's great and what we love to see are fleets that want to be leaders. So you had one, one, of, the, one of your great fleets um, on, on stage today. And the key really to this entire, you know, lower emission transition, I think, is about optionality, flexibility, and finding the right solution for that, not just fleet, but for that, for that use, use case. So the progression that Hylion's making, we think, is fantastic. We think hydrogen fuel cell um, can be a, a great part of that, of that future, and uh, we, we look forward to uh, the future together. Look forward to getting the truck out later this year. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Parker. Thanks so much, Thomas.